Family and and welcome. Today we are in John chapter 4, taking a look at verse 10. Here is our rubric, everything that we look for as we go through the text. Let's go ahead and get started. Respondit Jesus, et dixit eis scires donum dei, et quis est qui dicit tibi, da mihi bibere. Tu forsitan petisis ab eo, et dedicet tibi aquam viva. That's as far as we're going to go. We're, our verb is at the very beginning. Respondent, something we run into all the time. And um, we always have the problem of not knowing for certain without looking at the Greek whether it is a present tense or a perfect tense. So I have to dig the Greek out of the pile here to quickly look at that. Um, oh, wrong one. Here we go. Okay. According to the Greek, we have an aorist tense, apokrise, which I think is actually quite normal for running into this word. So this is going to be a perfect, probably, how it would be intended. Okay, then Jesus, we have U-S right there, our subject form. Jesus. Responded. Et. And. Dixit, we've seen this one many times before, no need to parse it either. Said, ae, ae from is, ea, id, this is the dative singular form, which all three of those share. To, to who, well, that's going to be the Samaritan woman, so her. Then we enter direct discourse with C. C is our particle meaning if, then skires. We have the S right there for our second person singular ending, but note that it is placed onto the infinitive, the second principal part of skio skire. And whenever we have that, whenever there is an infinitive used as the stem for the verb, what we actually have going on is a subjunctive. In this case, it's going to be the imperfect subjunctive, which makes sense since we've got if, because this is a hypothetical, and it's active and indicative. If you knew, you might have, n oh no, not might have known, if you might know, would be the way to translate that. Donum, U-M right there. Since we've got a second person as our subject, donum has to be accusative. And singular, and neuter. Dei, we've got that I right there, so it could be genitive singular, it could be nominative plural, or it could be, of course, vocative plural. But nominative plural doesn't make sense. Vocative plural doesn't make sense. So genitive is our best option. If, and clause starts right there, you, I'm going to go with new, gift of God et, and quis quid, this one is the interrogative form of our a relative pronoun. It is in a masculine or feminine singular nominative form. And since we got day right here, it's most likely going to be masculine. If we're referring back to donum, we would actually expect quid. Though quis might not refer to God, it might refer to someone else. And since, especially since we got the et right there. So that is creating its own clause separate from here. Yeah, so most likely masculine. Who est, this is from sum esse fui, no need to parse that. And we got another, a relative clause right here. This one is, of course, a nominative singular masculine or a nominative plural masculine. But since quis is singular, qui is going to be the same thing. Since est is linking the two together, who, and we might say it is who, again, Dikit, from dico dikere dixi. We've seen this one many times before. We've got it right there, but in this case, it is the present tense, otherwise identical in parsing. Who says tibi, tu tu, tu, tu tibi te te. We've got our dative singular here. To you, the indirect object. Then it looks like we're <laughs> he is quoting himself. So we've got additional directed discourse, da. This is, of course, the stem of do dare. And whenever we have the stem with nothing attached to it, we know that that is going to be the singular imperative. Second, singular, present, active, and imperative. Give. And then mihi is, of course, the first person 
equivalent of that. This is a dative singular again. Give to me. Bibere, here we have the RE, and that's going to be our infinitive for Bibo Bibere, and present tense, active, infinitive, give to me to drink. We got two, so then that tells us that this quote right here comes to an end. Two is our nominative with Tibi. You emphatic because a verb will have the person in it already. So we want to probably put you yourself. And then for sit on this is, I think it's an adverb. Yeah, never remember what these types of things are. But for sit on, it means perhaps. So you yourself perhaps petisses got an S right there, and then note we've got the I-S-S-E of the perfect infinitive, so peto, petre, peti, or petiwi, so petises, and petises, that is going to be our pluperfect subjunctive in second person singular, active, of course, because it's the third principal part, and subjunctive, you yourself perhaps and so we've got imperfect tense right here in the beginning of the question. And then we've got pluperfect tense here. So you knew, if you knew the gift of God, and then the way in English we would do it, perhaps you yourself would ask. We've got ab, beginning of a prepositional phrase with eo from is, ea, id, et. We've got a verb right there, so our phrase ends here. Plus ablative and singular. And AO is going to be referring back to who from him. Et and dedisit. Here we've got the pluperfect subjunctive again. So I'm just going to pull that, except that it is a third instead of a second. And he would give. Tibby, there's that again, no need to parse. To you. We've got aquam am right there for an accusative, singular, and feminine of the first declension. And then the last word in our verse, we vom. And then that one, I think it comes from the verb we wo, we wo re. And then I think it's we we. <laughs> and then uh, it, it, it might be we vom. Or we, we, no, we with him doesn't make much sense. So this could be a present, not present, a perfect passive participle. I know we would normally expect a S or a T before the AM right there. Or it could just be a normal adjective. I don't remember clearly. So I'm going to just treat this as a normal adjective. And if, if I'm wrong, I'll put a note about here. So again, accusative, singular, feminine, modifying that. And he would give to you living water. And there we have that. Let's take a look at it in its own context. Jesus responded and said to her, If you knew gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give to me to drink, you yourself perhaps would ask from him, and he would give to you living water. All right. Now from verse 1. Just as, therefore, Jesus knew that the Pharisees heard that Jesus makes more disciples and baptizes than John, although Jesus was not baptizing but his disciples, he left behind Jews and went away again into Galilee. It, but it was necessary for him to go across through Samaria. Therefore, Jesus comes into town of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near farm which Jacob gave to Joseph his own son, but there was there fountain of Jacob. Jesus therefore, having become tired from journey, began to sit thus on fountain. Hour was about sixth. Woman comes down from Samaria to draw water. Jesus says to her, Give to me to drink. 
for his disciples had gone away into city, in order that they might buy food. Therefore a woman says to him, that Samaritan one, How do you, although Jew, ask earnestly from me to drink, who am a woman, a Samaritan? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus responded and said to her, If you knew gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give to me to drink, you yourself perhaps would ask from him, and he would give to you living water. And there we have it. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, I think in a Greek video earlier this week, I said I planned on, for, for the review reading, just starting at verse 7 from this point, because that's when the woman shows up. Save a little bit of time. So you're aware for our next video. Well, I hope you have it a good day. Wale. What? You're still awake? Why are you still here, then? You should be reading a book. Or, if not reading, you should watch one of these other videos. Please like, subscribe, leave a comment. See you next week.